everybody and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to crochet the very easy and quick forked cluster stitch. If you love all things crochet and are passionate about the craft then you have definitely come to the right place. Hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss out on any of my future crochet videos. Now the forked cluster stitch is fantastic for giving you that almost puff stitch like texture without being the yarn eater that the puff stitch is notorious for. All right, let's jump straight into how you crochet the forked cluster stitch. So the pattern multiple for the forked cluster stitch is three plus two. Now what that means is you're going to pop a slip knot onto your hook and then you're going to chain in multiples of three, 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 three for as wide as you want your project to be then add two chains at the very end. Now I'm only going to be making a small sample today, so I'm going to go ahead and chain 20, which is 18, my multiple of three, plus two. So I've got my 20 chains to start. And on this very first row, it is a little bit tricky but once you have this first row out of the way, I promise it is plain sailing from that point. So bear with it for this very first slightly fiddly row. The forked cluster stitch is worked with two legs like that. So we're going to start with the very first leg straight away. Now we're going to work into the fifth chain from your hook. This loop on your hook does not count as anything. You only want to count the completed chains. So count back one, two, three, four, five. And we're going to work the first leg of the four cluster stitch into this fifth chain from the hook. So you're going to yarn over, insert your hook into that chain and pull up a loop. Now pull it up nice and tall. You Don't want anything angry and tight. You want it to be nice and loose. Then again, yarn over and go back into that very same chain and pull up a loop, nice and tall. You'll have five loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through the first four of those loops. You'll have two loops remaining on your hook. Now we're going to start the second leg of the forked cluster stitch. So yarn over again, skip a chain and work into the next one. So skip this one and into this next chain, pull up a loop. And remember, pull it up nice and tall. And again, yarn over, go back into that very same chain and pull up a loop. You'll have six loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through those first four. When you have three loops on your hook, Yarn over and pull through all three loops. And that's your first forked cluster stitch complete. Chain two. Now we're going to start our next forked cluster stitch. So into this very next chain, you can see where you just worked because that chain will be slightly stretched. Into this next one here, yarn over and pull up a loop. Pull it up nice and tall and repeat that again into that same chain. Five loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through the first four. Skip a chain and into that next one, work the second leg of the forked cluster. So yarn over, skip a chain, go into the next one and pull up a loop, pull it up nice and tall and repeat that again. You'll have six loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through the first four. Once you have your three loops, yarn over and pull through all three. And that's your second forked cluster stitch. So we're going to keep working like this down the length of the chain. Chain two, put your first leg of the forked cluster into the very next chain. So you want to yarn over and pull up a loop twice in that same chain. 
When you've got five loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through the first four. Then skip a chain and into that very next one, work the second leg of your cluster stitch by yarning over and pulling up a loop nice and tall twice. You'll have six loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through those first four loops. And once you have three, yarn over and pull through all three loops. So you can see you have these two legs with chain twos in between. When you reach the very last forked cluster stitch, you'll only have one chain remaining. Now do not chain two as you have been all the way down. This time, chain one and work a double crochet into that very last chain. Now row two is the pattern repeat row. So we're going to chain four, which counts as a double crochet and a chain one and turn your work. Now things get an awful lot easier from this point. We're no longer working into chains as you did on this first row. Instead, we're going to be working the fork cluster stitch into these chain spaces either side of your clusters from the row below. So it starts to get much, much faster. <laughs> So we're going to start the first leg of the forked cluster stitch into this very first chain one space. So just as before, yarn over, go into that space, pull up a loop and repeat that motion. You'll have your five loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through the first four. Now complete the second leg in the next chain two space. So yarn over, Go into this chain two space here and pull up a loop and repeat that again. You'll have six loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through the first four. And once you have three loops, yarn over and pull through those three loops. Chain two. Now you're going to start the next forked cluster stitch in this same chain two space where you just ended the last one. So yarn over and pull up a loop in that same chain two space and repeat that again. You've got your five loops, yarn over, pull through the first four and then complete the second leg of that stitch in the next chain two space. Yarn over, pull through your four loops and then yarn over and pull through all three to complete the fork cluster stitch. Chain two. And again, start your fork cluster in that same chain two space where you just ended and finish it in the next. chain two and repeat this all the way down the row your forked cluster stitches will be straddling the forked clusters from the row below so they're all line up stacked on top of each other
Don't forget you've still got one cluster right at the end here. So chain two, start your forked cluster stitch in this last chain two space and end it in this chain four space right at the very end here. Just take a moment to double check you have the same amount of forked clusters as you did in the row below and they're all straddling each other. And then to end, we're going to chain one and place a double crochet into the third chain of this chain four. You probably won't be able to see that fourth chain because you'll have worked over it with the cluster. So just aim for the top. So for the rest of this pattern, you simply repeat this second row. Chain four, which counts as a double crochet and a chain one, turn your work, start your forked cluster stitch in this very first place and end it in the next. Chain two, start your fork cluster in that same space where you just ended and finish it in the next chain two space. Work all the way along. You'll end your last cluster in that chain four space at the end of the row. Then chain one and work a double crochet into the third chain of that initial chain four. Or just the top if you can't spot it. And that's all there is to it for the forked cluster stitch. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. As you can see, it works up with a beautifully straight edge. And if you use a color changing yarn as I have here, you get this really lovely sort of color block effect to your work. I am really impressed with this stitch. It works up very, very quickly. And I hope you love it too. So until next time, happy crocheting.